There are over 50,000 Visual Studio Code extensions available for download on the Visual Studio Marketplace. And this is VS Code, right? You know, the text editor or IDE that maybe you use to write and develop software. So I got to thinking, how many of these extensions have vulnerabilities or weaknesses in the code that could be exploited from a security perspective and maybe hacked into or abused? I thought that would be kind of a cool research project, you know? Hey, how much software that you use for software that helps you write software could be bad? But the thing is, there are 50,000 of these extensions and more being added each and every day. So how could we automate this process and try to think through, okay, how can we determine if this extension has vulnerabilities. So I started to think up a game plan. I thought I would go loop through, enumerate, try to iterate through all of the potential extensions available on the Visual Studio Marketplace for Visual Studio Code, and I would look for the ones that are open source, or they offer their source code for how this extension is made, and they put it out publicly on the internet. I figured that first of all, this would be really cool because we could track down, hey, how many of these extensions are even verified or released from a trusted publisher? How many of these are just random, wacko, oddball stuff that's like, oh, test or test extension or I don't know, random characters, just nonsense hand jammed on the keyboard. So first things first, I dug into the Visual Studio Marketplace online in the web browser. I'd open up the developer tools like F12 on my keyboard, you know, Missouri hacking, and I thought, let's go see how it interacts with the API or the application programming interface, that backend sort of controller that would return all the data and the results that appear when you try to search for something. Say I searched for nothing, or I had a wild card where there was no filter, I just want all of the results returned back out to me, and I could see, okay, it uses this endpoint with these parameters, and now I could try to automate this. With that, I could ask for a little bit of help from ChatGPT, and maybe I could put together like a CSV file or a comma-separated value sheet that would say, look, this is the extension, here's the publisher, this is how many times it's been installed, this is whether or not it's verified, and if it can find it, include the source code repository. I put this together inside of a Google Sheets document so you can actually go see it. You can take a look and maybe we can add to this and update it as time goes on, but this on its own is already kind of cool. Hey, you can scroll through all the different extensions, you can sort by publisher, filter on this as you need it and see whether or not it's verified and how many times it's installed. What are the most popular extensions? Now, of course, the marketplace will tell you this, but it's kind of wild to have a little bit more of a visual representation of how many of these that there are and how many of them are not verified. Some quick behind the scenes, this is the source code that I use to download all of this and then compile and put it together as an extensions all CSV file. We'd go ahead and pull out the extension name, publisher verified, yada, 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 and then just slap it together into this file. Now, there were a total of 51,187,000 extensions when I pulled this data, and there are even more so now. This is obviously gonna keep changing every single day, but I'm curious, what's the new stuff that's being added, and is any of it valid or vulnerable? And I probably had some bad code, maybe you already saw the logic bug, but I only pulled out 51,000 of these. But take a look, here's one that's just called Test Hello, and the philosopher of villains is the publisher. No source code available, of course. Check it out, Test EXT Publish. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pock Shell? Ooh, that's kind of interesting. This extension is called Hi From Me. <laughs> Can I actually search like how many of these include just the word test? How about that? <laughs> okay, so control F found about like 1300, but we can honestly just filter this because we can say, look, let's set a condition where the text might contain test. And then let's search for that. Okay, down on the bottom right, uh, you can see just barely my face is in the way. About 778 of these all just contain the word test. Now, obviously, test could be like, hey, software test for the program that you're developing. But I'm curious how many of these weird random ones that don't have as many installs are just off the cuff, completely ad hoc, benign tests. <laughs> There it is, test hello again. Tom D test extension from publisher testing test test. <laughs> These are on the marketplace, you can download these. With that said, we can look at how many of these 51,000 are verified by just saying, look, only show me the true verified extensions. There are only 2,554 of them out of over 50,000. 48,450 could just be whatever, random stuff, who knows? Now remember, our goal is to try and find out how many of these extensions have vulnerabilities and how many vulnerabilities and what kinds of vulnerabilities. So I wanna filter this down as to which extensions actually have their source code included in the project or extension details. 
So say we went back to our spreadsheet and we started to filter on that source code column for the text does not contain just NA, not available. That's what I set when it didn't grab the source code repository. So if we filter that out, maybe we got about 39,830 source code repositories. Now I'll admit I took that even further where I just said, look, I only want to search for some GitHub repository. So let's say I'm looking for github.com in the URL and that brings that number back down to about 37,788. Now here's the next stage of the game plan. Let's download literally all of these extensions. I want to git clone and pull down the source code so that I could then go look through them for vulnerabilities. Now remember, that's 39,000 repositories or so. <laughs> so I asked my good friend ChatGPT one more time and they helped me put together this code where I am using some asynchronous functions here to try to multi-thread this or make it as fast as possible where I git clone or just download the source code for the repository. We'll pass it in, stage a couple of the directories that we need, and set a timeout where I try to just literally clone the repository with a depth of one. So I don't get all the commits and the version history and all that crap that we don't need. I just want the latest code. Now I know this is a little bit sketch. Hey, I'm using the CMD. Uh, hey, pass it into OS system. Sure, yeah, I know. But look, it's my code on my VM. It can be vulnerable if I want it to be, darn it. Then we just cut up the extensions all CSV file that we were working with and scroll through it to go grab all of the source code repository URLs and download them. This, by the way, was hysterical, just trying to see Git clobber itself over and over and over again in the same terminal. And here, the next thought was, cool, once we have all the source code downloaded, let's try to use a tool like SAST, or what is it, software application security testing, something like static analysis, tools that can help us look for vulnerabilities within the code in an automated fashion. And you know what? I think I have just the right tool for this job. We could use Sneak. I was just kicking around with the free plan of Sneak, but that has some limits as to how many tests you could run or code samples you could analyze and look for vulnerabilities. And obviously I pretty quickly, like extremely quickly blew past that limit because look, I have to scan through what, 39,000 repositories? Thankfully though, the Sneak team tier will give you unlimited tests so I could literally kick the tires on Sneak, make it scream, and just run it through 39,000 repositories. And actually, Sneak has been doing something kind of cool along the same lines as this. They recently just put together and released their 2023 State of Open Source Security Report, and it's genuinely really cool because you get to see all the data, all the analytics, and all the graphs and visuals that showcase what is the state of security in today's world of across our landscape. Do developers feel, and organizations and businesses and companies, do they feel like open source software is secure? What about the libraries, the packages, the modules, all the things that they use for their code? And what about supply chain security? What about containers? What about cloud configurations? What about Docker files? All the stuff that Sneak gets to help secure, they just kind of wanted to get a lay of the land. How are folks feeling about the security stuff? And I thought, hey, maybe we can throw our hat in the ring and say, look, how many of these open source, like, IDE extensions have vulnerabilities themselves. You know, the software that you use with the software that you use to write software, right? So here it is. This is where the real magic happens. This is the script and the engine that will roll through all of the repositories that we've downloaded from all those different GitHub locations across every single extension that we could, and it'll just run Sneak, process its output, and try to determine how many vulnerabilities are there. What about the critical severity vulnerabilities? What about the high, medium, low and track this all down and try to convey to us how many extensions across the Visual Studio Code Marketplace have vulnerabilities. Now I gotta be honest, it's still going. It's still looking through and looping through each and every single one of these, and it's been running for like the past week. <laughs> now don't get me wrong, I gotta go ahead and like release this video. So look, here is the CSV file so far as we've seen it, and these are all the vulnerabilities in all of the different extensions that Sneak has been able to track down and slotting them into their each severity bucket. We've cut up about uh, 16,000 right now, so nowhere even close to like 39,000. But look, I hope this shows you the proof of concept. And of course, once this thing finishes, if it ever does, then I'll update the Google Sheet, again, publicly available for you to be able to take a look. How about all these different Visual Studio Code extensions and what vulnerabilities are there? I'm curious though, across the 16,000 that we've already cruised through, what is the total number of vulnerabilities that we've seen? So I've got this command and there are 16,781, which is more than there are extensions. <laughs>
So back in the Google Sheets document, I have created this other worksheet for the vulnerabilities. And this is it. Here's the listing between all of the GitHub repositories that we've downloaded and how many vulnerabilities do they have and in which category, critical, high, medium, low, severity, etc. Let me say, this is like really, really cool to look through and it is pretty nice. Like, hey, you see a whole lot of zeros in here. We have some pretty secure and maybe safe extensions. However, there are a good many that raise an eyebrow. <laughs> Now, of course, you can filter on this, and I've actually gone ahead and created some filter views. Let's say any vulnerabilities, like just show me all of the extensions that had at least one vulnerability. And this is that. Now you can see there are about 1,500 of them. Filter applied on this sheet. Look, we can see maybe about 1,500 extensions that just have vulnerabilities. That's pretty good. Out of the 16,000 that there were, look, there's only a small percentage that actually have vulnerabilities. But what if we took that to any high severity vulnerabilities? Like, let me just see the stuff that actually has some big name vulns. There actually weren't any critical vulnerabilities across all of the extensions that we've seen thus far, which is kind of nice. That's pretty good, right? So I wanted to look for those high vulnerabilities. And with that, maybe we can hone in on some of these that offer the most threat, right? Like code execution or command injection, that stuff can probably do a lot of damage. Let's exit this filter view. And then let's say, look, because there aren't any critical vulnerabilities, maybe we can fold that tab or something. But let's just say, hey, for any of the high vulnerabilities, I want to showcase the stuff that actually includes maybe text contains, what is it, uh, injection? How about that? We can start with that, right? And now we've got some big name stuff. Look, this one has a lot. <laughs> Here's a WordPress playground, a little sketch. Netbeans.git has 2,000, almost 3,000 vulnerabilities. And that I think is like the highest number that we've seen. Is that right? We could track down the maximum, but let me go see. Look, netbeans.git, let's search for that in the other extensions page so we can go find what actual uh, extension is that. And that's from Apache. That's like a verified and like, legitimate extension. Now, of course, you gotta take this with a grain of salt. We're kind of sweeping with broad strokes here. We haven't gone and validated or vetted any of these at first glance, but if you see like, oh, there are 3,000 vulnerabilities in this thing, maybe it's kind of hard to whittle that down to the wheat and the chaff, right? Ooh, bun.git is in here. Is that is that real bun? Oh man, don't tell the, the front end frogs. Let's go ahead and remove that filter. And let's just say, look, I wanna look for any of these that actually have maybe five or more vulnerabilities. Let's say a condition here where the uh, number is greater than or equal to five. How about that? Let's search for those. This is about 412, which is kind of wild. Are there any odd ones that just sort of stick out? Not only hello, <laughs> a.git. That is the name of this. What is this universal exploit executor? What? If we turn off the filter and then we just kind of start poking around, right? Again, let me control F for that like command injection. How about that? That's a low vulnerability one. How about this? Ooh, Python 2 source code and command injection on MS code May API. Here's one that's kind of interesting. It only has two vulnerabilities and one of them is command injection, but that is basically it other than insufficient post message validation. So the thing is, I didn't add in the CSV spreadsheet, the actual like path and location and file line for each and every one of these vulnerabilities, but Sneak could track that down for you. Remember inside of Kali, I had gone ahead and actually downloaded every single repo. So in this directory, there are just tons and tons of repositories. Uh, so we could actually go check out, what is it like power app helper.git. And if I were to sneak code test one more time here, just to kind of get the analysis done right then and there, it'll go ahead and look through this says, look, this is the command injection that we saw on this specific file at this line number. So we could just dig into it since we've downloaded all that. What does a uh, gulp file.js have? Wait, this is like a Microsoft thing. So again, look, I, I don't know if this is real. Uh, I haven't gone to validate this personally, but on line 158, yeah, we, we have an execute <laughs> that passes in the arguments from this function, just joins them together. And where do we call git? Where do we use this? git config local repo URL in the bearer. Could we tamper with that? Could we manipulate that? I'm curious. Like, are there any variables or inputs that we might control in any of these? We'd have to kind of go search for these, but oh, check out head branch. That looks like something that maybe we could, I'd have to look more and more into the source code, but obviously there are variables being funneled into that exec call. And maybe there literally is code execution some way, somehow. 
There are a couple other of these vulnerabilities that are kind of interesting. Like I think I saw, yeah, like a hard-coded secret. So in case any of these just happen to have what looks like a secret key or any like real session tokens or API keys, that's kind of wild. We could maybe just explore and dig through that. What is this linear VS Code Connect extension? That sounds real. Let me search through that in the big long list, see if we can get the repository. Oh yeah, that is like a verified extension, linear connect. Uh, let's go check out that one. Linear VS Code Connect Extension. Connect VS Code to Linear API. We could dig into the source code and maybe we could run Sneak again if we wanted to, but it looks like it's small. Here's the Linear Authentication Provider. That sounds interesting. And oh, sure. <laughs> OAuth Client Secret, right here. Not really that secret, eh? OAuth, OAuth two servers, single page. Maybe it's just, maybe it doesn't need to be secret. I don't know. They're like memeing on the fact that they just included that here. Is that fine? Maybe that's fine. I, I don't know. Hippie.git has some command injection. Presumably a lot of command injection, okay. And hey, I don't mean to drag you down the rabbit hole here. I think this is kind of neat and I think hopefully it's a cool proof of concept. Maybe it's just interesting to you and you wanna go take a look. And for that reason, hey, I wanna share this, make it accessible for you, link in the description to see some of this uh, spreadsheet. And again, maybe this is a cool project, inspires you to make some of your own. And as there is more stuff being uh, uncovered by the engine and the script that I have kind of cruising through this, I'll try to add them back into the repo. But maybe all the software that we use in our software to write software isn't all that secure when we're hoping to make secure software. Kind of interesting. I wonder how much of this might have malware components or any sketchy stuff. All of it could be worthwhile to dig into and maybe this is one way that we could start a little bit of that. Hey, take a look at Sneak's State of Open Source Security Report for 2023. There are genuinely some really cool insights in there. I'll have the link for that in the video description. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, do those YouTube algorithm things, and I'll see you in the next one. Maybe with more vulnerabilities in the Visual Studio Code Marketplace. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.